we're ready to go. Are we ready to go? We're ready to go. You All ready? right. Okay. Hey. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm Cynthia. I'm this, Barb. And we're from? River City Yarns. Yeah. Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Local yarn shop. And, and we both have colds today. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. She gave it to me. And I gave it to her. Yeah. Because we share everything, don't That's we? That's right. Yeah. So if we crack up a little bit today or <clears throat> I start to sneeze uncontrollably, that's right. what that's all about. Right. But you know what? We have this yarn shop and it doesn't matter. You know, when you get sick, you still have to come and open up the doors and, and try and stay out of the way so that nobody else gets your uh, That's right. Your cold. At the end of the day, we take out the Lysol wipes and we go over <laughs> all the keyboards and the mouse yeah. and the phones and... And we, we try to disinfect everything that we've touched during the day. Yeah. I don't know if it helps. It's November in Edmonton. What can we say? That's right. Yeah. I'm going to, well, I have to wait till I get better to get a flu shot. You know, you can't get a flu shot when you have a cold. They, I, they say. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh. So I'm, I'm hoping to get one of those next week. Before you, before you go on vacation. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah a well-deserved vacation because we have been busy, busy, busy. Oh man. Yeah. We've had a busy month. <laughs> a lot. We've been traveling and uh, well, it, we had a show. And yeah. We're a little, we're, we're a little stressed out. I don't know if you can tell with the colds and the hair and you know, everything. It's just, it's, it's been kind of a, it's been kind of a rough, it's been a little bit of a rough time. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then with our mom being sick. Yeah, yeah, it started a couple of months ago. Our mom fell in her home and ended she's up in the 90. hospital. She's mm 90. -hmm. She's a very fit 90, though. She's been going to, she's a snowbird. Mm -hmm. She goes, leaves Edmonton every year and goes to Palm Springs, where she has a home there. She's the oldest resident in, <laughs> in her trailer park in Palm Springs. Yeah. She's been there the longest, I think, 40 years. Yeah. And this but, year she came home and had a little fall. And well, ended up in the hospital three times. So yeah. we were back and forth between emergency and the the story the story is good. She's she's home now. Yes. But um we you know, we're still concerned about her and Yes, I called her our <laughs> my China doll. Because she broke one arm and then she kind of fractured her other shoulder. And so here she is trying to go through, you know, therapy and mm -hmm. rehab to get her strength back. So right. But she's doing good. She is. He, she is so so. Hospital system here working working well for yeah. her mom, and then um, and then just before she went home, we took off when we went to Knit City in Vancouver. Right. Yeah. That was fun. It was really fun. We we launched. We were <coughs> in the midst of launching eight new patterns, five of which we launched with Holly Yo mm. um, in Vancouver at Knit City. So that was great, and we went to visit yeah. some of our friends distributors um we, we took met up classes with, <laughs> we did we had a great time we took classes with bristol ivy uh yeah. on um brioche <laughs> brioche and, and uh, also her new she's writing a new book and it's all about um designing and thinking about uh thinking outside of the box as a way of designing and she, i got a preview of that right book in her class so i think she's going to be teaching that across the country next year and promoting her book very exciting. Right. Yeah. And there was some math involved in that class, right? There was. Yeah. But she's done it all for you. So that's really nice. That is very nice. How to make different shapes. So, you know, if you wanted to make a shawl, you could make it any shape you wanted. Just, you know, using her like templates is quite brilliant. Cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we came home. Right. We packed up Advent boxes. Yes. That's <laughs> right. We the took off again. The elves went crazy here we had assembly lines upstairs and down and people were putting together things in boxes and mm -hmm. assembling them and we've spent yep. the last probably three weeks mailing them all out so if anybody hasn't got their box get a hold of us um there's you know still a few that just went out a day ago mm -hmm. so they could be on santa's sleigh winging their way to you but the hardest part i think with those is going to be waiting to open them up to December the 1st. So no peeking. <laughs> try to try and, or if you do peek, just don't post about it on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we came home, we did some packaging up and then we went off again to right. Bainbridge Island. Right. Yeah. <coughs> that was for Church Mouse Yarns and Teas retreat. Right. Um, where we had a great time going through some of the tailored effects in their patterns and mm -hmm. we're planning to share that with you here in the store um in the new year 
Mm-hmm. So we've we've gone through several of their patterns suggest that you should start with a provisional cast on, for example, and there was a tubular cast on, tubular bind off. So we um, we did some classes with Kit. Mm-hmm. Um, Kit, I always forget Kit's last name. I want to say Hutchinson. Right, that's it. Yeah. Yes, and she <laughs> was great. She kind of led us through which patterns had which techniques. And so we went and, and practiced those techniques. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to bring that back with our folks here in our shop so that we can help support the pattern line. It's such a yeah. critical part, we believe, of our shop. We sell a lot of church mouse patterns. Well, we love them. They're yeah. so good. They're so well written. And we get to meet their design team. And now we, we kind of understand why they're so well written. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, it gives me a better understanding, too, of why their patterns are priced the way they are. I mean, their photography is fabulous. Mm. Their patterns are all tech edited and tested. The paper is really premium paper. Mm-hmm. It's very nice card stock. Yeah. Photography is great. But, you you know, you have to pay for all of that work that goes into them. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's, I, I think their patterns really stand up to the price that they charge Absolutely. for them. Absolutely. Yeah. They're worth every penny. Yeah. Yeah. And people are collecting them. They're like a collector's item, mm. you know, so um, put them in nice sleeves and keep them in a binder. They're, we just knit them over and over and over again. You know, you know what I do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I buy the print pattern because I love it, right? Yeah. And I do what you're saying. I put it in a sleeve and put it in a book, and then I go and I buy a PDF because oh. <laughs> I like go. I like to have it on my tablet, right, wherever I go, yeah, and and have it handy. Um, so that's a great idea. So buy the pattern twice, like <laughs> Cynthia does. <laughs> Yay, church moms. <laughs> But the oh, other man. thing about being at Church Most that I thought was so special was that we got to see all their samples. And, you know, yeah. not just Church Most's samples, and they have a lot of them. There's some, every single garment was there, plus seconds and thirds that people who were on their staff, I think, made right. or on their design team. Well, and participants like you and I, I mean, you, you wore your easy folded poncho. Well, right? that, yeah, that's where mm-hmm. I was going is that I don't know, I've never seen so many modern rappers in the same room. Right. Yeah, it was it was really cool. <laughs> that pattern the modern wrapper was done so many ways yes. too. You could seam it up the front and yeah. uh, just it was beautiful. Yeah. And that simple tea. Yes. One out, out of Euroflex. I ordered that today. Did you? The, or, <laughs> the Euroflex in the Burgundy. Oh, good. I'm making that okay, one. Okay, well, on our next podcast, maybe you'll have it cast on. Yes. We can talk about that. Yeah, I plan okay. on taking it with me on vacation. Right. And then we got back from Bainbridge, and we had, like, maybe a week, and then we had yep. the Knit for Fun retreat here in Edmonton. That's right. Which is where I lost my voice. <laughs> <laughs> Completely. I had to do all the talking. It was tough. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> trying to talk as much as I do. <laughs> yes, that's right. It's very difficult, <laughs> but I manage. <laughs> oh yeah. man! So we had a it's great a time. Good thing that I know sign language, sort of, <laughs> or I can read your mind. I there you we have go. we have ESP. That's it. That's mm-hmm. it. Joined at the hip. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we had a really good we had a really good time at the yeah. Knit for Fun retreat. It was. Do you want to talk about that a bit? Well, I'm wearing my Ann Bud skirt today. Okay. Um, because I because I you know can't get enough of Ann Bud, and I'm working on a Hohi Locatelli sweater, and in my basket I have my next project I want to do, which is inspired by Susan B. Anderson. So maybe we'll just talk about it. Yeah. You know, as we go. I mean, Ann Hohi and Susan were teaching classes, mm-hmm. so. It was three days. They had a, a first day on Thursday that was an intensive class. So it was all day with one of those instructors, and they were fabulous. You, they really got to delve in deep, hoey with her boxies and her sweater shapes. And Susan, Susan did uh, shawl shapes, I think, mm-hmm. and uh, Susan, or sorry, and Anne did skirts. Her skirt, like customize your own skirt, hack her skirt pattern. So she gave you all the measurements that you need to take. And talked a lot about gauge so that you can customize one of her skirt patterns to fit your body shape mm-hmm. exactly. So that was really valuable. But well, we got great <clears throat> feedback from everybody who came to there. Right. We just thrilled that there was that much information. Right. And then after that, people got to take short classes. So yeah. on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, oh, Friday, Saturday, Friday, Sunday. Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday morning. Yeah. 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 And then so there were all good. kinds of other fun events. There was a pajama party. Yes. and. Yes, there was a Friday night extravaganza. Right, where the, the grocery, grocery girls, girls were there. Uh, interviewed the instructors and then uh, did a little competition 
um, having people create sweaters, hats, and mitts for them out of toilet paper. That was is very really funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's going to be on Anne's YouTube video. Probably. So we yeah. should put a link in there so people can go see right. all the hijinks. We'll do that. Yeah. Now, speaking of learning new things, mm -hmm. can I change the subject and tell you about something I learned this week? Absolutely. I just think this is so cool. So I want to make a shout out to our friend Sandy Price. Sandy posted on our Ravelry page. Um, if you want to see what Sandy posted, just go to Ravelry and under groups, type in River City Yarns. We have a group there. Anyway, Sandy was talking about doing ribbing. And you know, when you do ribbing, how sometimes your knit stitch looks kind of sloppy next to a purl stitch mm -hmm. because, you know, there's that yarn issue. You're bringing the yarn back around. Exactly, back. exactly. So Sandy said that she saw a video by um, Very Pink Knits yeah. on how to correct that problem. And I tried it on my Hohe sweater. And I have to tell you, I'm so impressed. So you won't be able to see this, but I'll just let Barb, just let Barb tell you. Down here on my sweater, you see how it's really sloppy? Yeah. Starting the ribbing. And here, it's just nice and neat. I'll take oh a close-up picture afterwards and show you. So the trick is this. I'm, I'm knitting, and now my next two stitches are pearls. Right. So, so you've you, been at the back, now you come to the front. Right. And so you make your purl mm -hmm. stitch, right. just your regular way. And then before you make your next purl stitch, you take the yarn to the back like you're going to knit next, and you give it a tug. Right. And that just tightens everything up, and then you come forward again, and you purl your next stitch. So it works really well if you've got two-by-two two ribbing. Anything where mm. the distance between the knits and purls is more than one stitch. So if you're doing two knits, two purls, on your first purl, Take the yarn to the back and give it a good tug, and oh. then then bring it forward and purl the next stitch. It just makes, like, I, you can see the difference, right? You, you, you can, can see, see the difference. You can see how loose and sloppy it is, and then how nice and neat it is up there. Wow. So I will take a close up picture and we'll insert it into the video so you can see what I'm seeing, and I'll put a link to the video as well so you can see There's it. There's so many techniques out there, isn't there? Yeah. You know, yeah. I think. Um, the internet has just totally changed our business. We, well, we would have had to rely on books yeah. in the past, you know, to, and now everybody's coming up with such great ideas. Right. People have been and, trying things. Well, I think this is, this is part of my, this is part of my point and my thank you to Sandy because there's so much stuff out there. How do you find what you're looking for? Sandy came to one of our Thursday night knit nights. They were mm -hmm. talking about, you know, rib stitches and how she's, and she said to them, this is how I do it because of this video. And then she went into our forum and she posted a link to the video. So I just think sometimes, you know, other people really make a difference. And another customer contacted us today and told us how happy she was to come to the Knit for Fun retreat. It was yeah. her first retreat. And she really liked the social interaction with other knitters. Yeah. She can't come to our regular Thursday night group because she lives far away. And so I'm, I'm putting my thinking cap on to how we can, you know, bring more people in who live outside of the city, mm -hmm. maybe who live in the U.S. And they could, how they could join us. Um, every now for and then a for a Thursday night. night knit night. It'd be fun to do something with Google Hangups or something. Something like that, yeah, yeah. Anyway, that was that was a little tip, and we'll we'll put some information in the show notes. But just so so nice to be in the yarn shop all the time and learning from people who come in the door. Yeah. It's great. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. And we yeah. get to see so many projects, too. So I think that's... Um, <laughs> we say we live vicariously through everybody else's projects. It's hey? true. It's true. And we learn so much with everybody who comes in and shows us what they're working on. Yeah. So All right. So what are you working on? Oh, no, you, tell me about your finished object first, because Barb is the only finished object <laughs> this month. Okay. <laughs> this is just a scarf. It's a really long one that I did out of gels. So this, again, I think um, we talked last time about this yarn from Denmark. We've been playing with it, and I'm in love with the wool cotton. It's just such a nice, cozy fabric, and yet it's cool at the same time. The cotton has a cooling effect to it. So um, I did this one up on my machine. I did it really tight, so it's quite, it's quite dense. Mm -hmm. And it's just a bunch of stripes. It's like 20 rows, and you just change colors. And then I popped in for fun just a, a <clears throat> stripe of blue, and then over here just a different stripe of blue a little darker one so just to have some fun playing with different shades of gray and I can't tell you how much this goes with everything in my wardrobe it's just a nice cozy piece you can wear it as a shawl right. or as a scarf 
You've been getting lots of compliments on it. Yeah, yeah. lots of people want to make it. And, and then easy. when we went to Bainbridge Island, you were working on an etching for it. Right. And everywhere we went on the... I'm so jealous of people in Seattle because you can go to the airport and then you can take a train right into downtown Seattle. And what it cost yeah. us, like... Three dollars and fifty cents, I think, American. It was it was mm-hmm. great, and so Barb was working on the edging on the train. Yes. She has this long scarf, and tell us what you were doing. Well, I had to pick up stitches <laughs> along the edge. So every three out of four stitches, I was picking up three out of four rows. Three out of four rows, yeah. yeah. And it was long, like it's it's got to be seven feet <laughs> or longer, maybe. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I think it's longer. Maybe it's longer. So you picked up stitches all the way along the yeah. long edge. This is the wrong side. And then you did this is the, and this I is the just right side. yeah I just knit and so it curls in on itself and just forms an edging and I love it. It's just I just used up a little bit of the um, one of the stripe colors. Light blue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna give it a press too at home with an iron and see. Right. If Do I you have any idea how many stitches you picked up? No. Okay. I didn't count. I was drinking wine. (laughs) (laughs) It's beautiful. It's nice and cozy. I love it. Yes. And I'm using the same yarn for my Hohi Locatelli sweater. Yes. So thank you for sharing that with us. Do you remember how many balls you used? Oh, gosh. I'll have to weigh it. I'm going to put it on my Ravelry page. Okay. Nitty in the City. That's my Ravelry page. Nitty, so K N I T T Y in the city, mm-hmm. all one word. Yeah. Yep. And we'll, we'll put a link on the bottom and I'll put it up on Ravelry. Okay. And then instructions for how yeah. to make your own. Yeah. Um, so this is my, so this is obviously not a finished object, although I was knitting furiously while we were on Bainbridge Island as well. Yeah. And this is made out of the same yarn. This is uh, Hoki Lo, Ho, 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 Locatelli's boxy and buttony yeah uh, and she does it out of a fingering weight yarn i'm using a sport weight yarn but i'm getting gauge and it's really interesting you start with this tubular cast on you start with the flaps that will end up having buttons on them a, you do the back for a little bit and the sleeves then you do the front and i've now wow you're you're really you've got all the sleeves done we got, well you you will you do pick up afterwards and knit more right. down this way. So, but so, but yeah, there's oh, just you know, you. there's quite a bit done. That's and, pretty, uh, and I'm just working in the round. So, and this is just like one by one rib. It it it, it is. It's um, but the but the knit stitches are all twisted. Ah. And for a while, you knit flat on it because it's not in the round until you get to under the arms. Mm-hmm. So, on some when on the wrong side, you're purling you're, you're doing twisted purl stitches and on the knit side you're doing twisted knit stitches once you work in the round they're all twisted knit stitches mm. i noticed on some of her other patterns she uses the same kind of design yeah and it gives it kind of a mesh look so Pretty. i'll definitely be wearing a t-shirt underneath it when i'm done <laughs> do you think <laughs> it's a you bit can't it's see a bit, through it can i think once i block it mm. it will be that's but that's pretty. okay I, I like to do that anyway because at this time of life, you know, sometimes you want to wear a sweater, sometimes you don't. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not a cardigan, it's a pullover, so... You I might will... be f- taking that on and off, you have to wear a yeah. shirt underneath. Yeah. But it's nice, because I'm at the point now where it's a bit of a mindless knit, because I'm just going around and around, except for that panel in the front. I'm really just knitting. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to take my time now. The rush is over, because, oh, he's gone back to Argentina. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so that's, that's one of my... Um, that's one of my whips. And mm-hmm. then you're working on a whip as well. I am, yeah. <clears throat> so speaking of rib, this is a two-by-two two rib. Okay. So I should have... And this is loosely knit. So you don't really have to worry about sharp edges on your knit stitches, right. do you? No. This is beautiful. I, thanks. This and is soft. one of those concentric balls. Do you want me to hold this for you? Sure. So concentric, Yes. This, this is, is the yarn. It's called Concentric by Haiku. And um, we fell in love with this when we saw it in Dennis and Diane's shop. She had a little vest that was made out of it. Oops. It's 100% baby alpaca. And it's four strands of yarn, four lace weight strands that are held together. And they're gradiated. So they start out with four black. And then they drop one and add a gray in, a really dark gray. And then it goes two black, two gray one black, three gray. And so it changes colors. There's several different shades of gray. 
and then it comes into a light gray. And now I'm just getting into the um, creams. So right now I'm working kind of like three really light gray with one dark gray. This the other yeah, gradient. The gradient in here is really clever. Mm -hmm. Like you, you know, it, it just well, it's so subtle, right? Yeah. Because you've got four strands. Yeah. And this is so soft, you guys. Hundred percent baby. Hey. Yeah. And I wanted to make kind of like a wide piece, a little bit shorter. I I think it's going to end up being a fairly, probably <laughs> twice this length. But I wanted to put it together with one of those jewel closures because mm. we have a few of these really cool leather closures mm -hmm. with ties on them, and I we, really like them a yeah. lot. We talked about we talked about those maybe two podcasts ago. Right. Yeah. We had. Uh, yeah. Well, remember really you wrapped me up in the scarf. Yeah, <laughs> the one with the locket. Yeah. 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 I really like the one with the leather ties, and so yeah. I'm going to do that with this piece. That's really nice. And again, mm. uh, just a, something you can take with you everywhere. Exactly. <clears throat> you know, I love mindless knitting because often I'm so tired at night <laughs> I can't do a pattern. So, But I like to have something in my hands. I like to be able to knit, so this is yeah. my answer to that. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, no, I have a couple of things that I'm calling wannabe whips. Oh, they, yeah, show us what you They're like. They're, they're conceived in my mind, but, but I haven't given birth to them yet. Right. <laughs> okay, so when I came into the store this evening uh, to do our filming, Suzanne yeah. was making a new display. Suzanne is one of our staff members who does these incredible displays in she her store. She merchandises for yeah. us, and it's amazing. It's always lovely, yep. Yeah. So she was, she was working on a new display with this stuff. This is um, Katcha Concept. It's... Um, Katina Merino Fine. It's a superwash merino, and it's one of those yarns that's been done up in a chainette. Mm -hmm. So it's really light. I did that little striped hat. You did. It. I the think two. it's just hanging up over here. Mm -hmm. So Susanna and I were talking, and she said that you mentioned to mm -hmm. her that you thought it would be fabulous as a baby blanket. Well, and as a crocheted one. You know, we're always talking about crocheting things because... I don't feel we have quite enough crochet samples in our store. It's, we have a lot of crocheters. Right. And so um, you did that church mouse baby blanket before. Right. And Suzanne and I thought, oh, this would be so beautiful in a baby blanket. Right. This uh, church mouse. Oh, so, look at all the colors you've right. got. So the church mouse blanket was kind of fun because Here, let me it was, uh, I'm just going to do this. Oh, so, you know, there's something about, um, you know, pink and gray and right. blue and taupe that just looks so beautiful. We were talking about girl blankets and boy blankets. And this last little blanket I did, I wanted to use it as a stir sample. So I wanted to show you what two different colors of a yarn look like. So I did half the blanket in one striping colorway and the other half in another striping right. colorway. So I'm going to do the same thing with this blanket. Mm -hmm. I volunteered to knit it because I love this pattern. And we're going to use some cream in there as well. So yeah. half of it's going to be in this striping colorway, nice. which is kind of girly. And then the other half Separated is going to be... Separated by cream? Yeah. And in this, you know, little boy blue colorway. And... Barb, like this yarn is so I know. soft, so so soft. I worked with it; it's it's beautiful. The pattern I'm going to use is another church mouse pattern. <coughs> it's their vintage crochet blanket, and I've I've crocheted this. Oh, I don't know. Both Rachel and Hayden have one. Yeah, I sent one to my um, my great nephew. Um, no, my nephew. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, Mike's uh, Mike's brother has a oh. had a little baby and so my husband's brother and so yeah. I made one for him and um, it's just it's a really easy crochet pattern and church most does a beautiful job so I'm going to do it in that one and I'll I, I should have that one whipped up in no time because it's crochet right and you know crochet always goes a little bit faster so that's one of my wannabe whips nice in this gorgeous gorgeous soft yarn now this yarn is also on our online store so if you mm -hmm. want to do something like this um, you can you can purchase it on our online store, or you can send me an email and ask me how many balls I used. Once mm -hmm. I once I get going, I can let you know, and um, and I'll help you out with you that. You can put it up on Ravelry <clears throat> too, right? I can, I can. Mm -hmm. I'm, or I can get you to do it for me, maybe, because <laughs> you're better at that than me. Yeah. <laughs> now the other thing that's really inspired me is today I picked up this book because. 
We were selling these books at um, the Knit for oh. Fun retreat. Yes. This is Susan B. Anderson's book. And we haven't sold this book in our store before because this is a book that she did for Barrett Wool, right? Um, well, Company. Quince and Co. Quince and Company. Thank yeah. you. Um, but we brought it in because because it's so adorable. Yeah. And um, I think you, you might have had to... Toys yes, too. Yes. You might have had to jump through some hoops to get this book because yeah. it's a little harder to put your hands on, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Barb, I was looking at it today. What are you going to make? Well, in the beginning of the book, there's these really adorable patterns, but they're all sized from newborn to 18 months. And then halfway through the book, Susan does this amazing thing. She tells you how to make a, a top-down cardigan in any size. Oh. So she um, she explains in the middle of the book how to get a T-shirt, or not how to, but to take a T-shirt from, from the child of your choice, so for me mm -hmm. that's Rachel and Hayden, and to make measurements, to take measurements from the T-shirt. And then she says, do a gauge swatch and count your stitches, and then look at this part. Oh, there's a worksheet. She gives you a worksheet. So you fill in the blanks and you have a pattern to do your own top-down raglan cardigan from from top to bottom uh, in any yarn at all. Oh, that's nice. So now... So I'll, what are you going to do it out of... Well... You have to do it out of Eden. I, well, so obviously Rachel needs a purple sweater. <laughs> and we have the same colors in Adam and Eve and Eden. And you know, I'm kind of partial to the fingering weight yarns. Yeah. So I need your help to decide mm -hmm. which one. But I think purple for Rachel, right? It would be fun. And then Hayden oh would my look gosh. amazing in this green. And again, we've got Adam and Eve and Eden yeah. in the same colorway. This one is called Hyacinth, and this one's called Galilea. Yeah. So do you think I should go worsted? Mm -hmm. And it'd be quick and easy. Yeah, because or do you guys should go fingering. Yeah, we don't have that much time. <laughs> it's got to be worsted. Okay, okay. So even yep. it is, I'm gonna cast those on. I'm so oh, excited. Oh, nice. Thank you, Susan B. Anderson, for the worksheet. And um, and I'm thinking too. In the new year, we have to do a class, like a sweater class. Well, there's so much fun. Where everybody does sweaters. a gauge swatch, and then we, you know, this book isn't very expensive. Um, and I think just having the worksheet in there is worth mm -hmm. every penny. Well, you, just seeing Cynthia's grandkids, because they are just <laughs> the cutest little things ever. I um, told them I'd make them Christmas sweaters, and they were jumping up and down. Like, oh. Hey! So. <laughs> now, you know, they actually love to wear <laughs> knitwear. I hope that lasts, you know, when they become teenagers, that they're still... Uh, Excited yep. about that. Hayden was wearing his Gramps sweater today that I made him out of Eden. Great. <laughs> With the little patch pockets. Yes. That's okay. Thank you, Tin Can Knits. Yes. That's yes. a great pattern. It's it so is. Good. It's totally good. So this book is just adorable. Isn't it? Look at the little Christmas sweaters. Too. I know. Oh, the girls were talking about what we should make for our Advent. Garland. Garland for the store. Definitely. It's either this or your mini mitten pattern. Right. Now, the little tiny sweaters, if you want to do them and you don't want to buy the book, she has published that pattern separately. Oh, And great. so you can purchase that one online. It's called, mm -hmm. um, I think it's just called Tiny Sweaters. Well, this one doesn't weigh much either to send it out. It'd be, is it on our online store? It is not, but it could be. But it could be. <laughs> or just phone us at our shop yeah. and we'd be happy to ship one out we'll to you. We'll do that. We'll do that. All right. So let's, let's move on. We wanted to talk about... Um, what's new in the shop, right? Yep. yep. I I wondered if you noticed my beautiful bracelet. I did notice your beautiful bracelet. It goes with my. It goes with my. Oh, those are my beautiful necklace. Did you just make that? No. Is Ra that the one you got at Church Moss? No, no. Oh. This is Rachel was over at my house today, and she was playing with my necklaces. And then before she left, I had to take it back. So I said I would wear it with my outfit today. Oh. And so that's what it is. But, but it does match my bracelet. It does. And what does your bracelet say? Awesome leather bracelet that says, True friendship is helping someone and untangle her yarn. Oh, my God. Isn't that cute? It is cute. You know, I got that saying put on that bracelet because I thought of Mrs. Barone. Oh. Do you remember how many times my mother-in-law, who's not with us anymore, but she would come to the shop mm -hmm. and help us unwind tangles? Mm -hmm. I even remember she took home a real dog's breakfast one time and <laughs> totally unwound it and took her days. Yeah. yeah. But she was just such a sweet person. She 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 was. She yeah. sure was. Yeah. yeah. 
miss her every that's day. Her, that's her legacy. Mm-hmm. She's passed on. So yeah. she would yeah. help us do that. And yeah. so we came out with these bracelets. I've got one too. Mm-hmm. What does yours say? A lady never discusses the size of her <laughs> yarn stash. Truer words I'll have bet, never I'll been bet, spoken. I'll bet you are kind of like a dame of yarn stashes, aren't you? Well, let's just say... <laughs> We have a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So these are leather leather bracelets yeah. uh, made locally, right? Brick Bubble. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Diana Brick Bubble <laughs> makes these for us, and they're just so cool. They're a nice piece of leather. They have mm-hmm. two snaps, so they can fit kind of s- snugger or looser, however you want to wear them. Yeah. And they're all filled with little cheeky sayings. Yeah, and then you got Diane to make some other things. Yes. So what are these? Those are keychains. Mm-hmm. So those have our little logo on them, yep. and those two have little cheeky sayings. Life is short. Knit with cashmere. That's your favorite saying. Yeah. This one says, "I like to party," and by party I mean knit. Yeah, I like that one too. <laughs> and this one is, "I get by with a little help from my yarn." Yeah. Cute. And then tell us about these. You know what? Yeah. My, my husband told me he wants me to bring one of these home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can't tell you how many people picked them up today. We had them out on the on the front counter. Yeah. So this is a tea bag. It is. It's like a silicone, like the same kind of uh, material that they use for those cookie sheets that you can put in the oven. So this one, you put your loose tea in the bottom and then pop the bottom back on and it goes into your tea. So you can, you know, dunk away. And they work great. So I have usable. two of them at home. And then they just have our little logo on yes. the end. Yes, yes, that's really good. So I will take this, since I've touched it with my yes. with my cold fingers, <laughs> I will uh, take this one home, buy this one, and take it home to my Yes, I think you yeah. should. Yep, yeah, that's mine. So just so that's some fun really, new little really branded cool. products. Yeah, uh, great great for um, Christmas presents. They are. For People who uh, people who appreciate yarn, or just you know, if you want to treat yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we got a couple of new yarns we want to we talk did. about. I mean, we always have new yarns. It's just so many we can't talk about them all. But right, this one, this, this one, one, I love. And this one we're going to talk, mm-hmm. talk, talk about because this one's not on our online store. It can't be on our online store, right? Yeah. So sometimes we buy yarn from companies who just you know want to have their own online store and we respect that and so we can sell it in our shop but we don't sell it online right if you want to if you want to buy it online you can buy it directly from from the company right. this from one's called Scott. so and where are they Barb? these guys are in montreal and they have a little yarn shop there okay and they make this striping yarn and That's this amazing. is kind of like our version of self self striping um it's so soft though <laughs> This yarn is probably the softest kind of sock yarn. Well, we, you and I have been collecting this for quite a while. Every mm-hmm. time we go to Knit City or when we go to another yarn shop that mm-hmm. carries it, this is what we, we buy. buy it. Yeah. yeah. So I have a few of these in my collection, and it is incredibly soft. I know. I'm making mittens out of it right Are now. You? Yes. Yeah, using the Lucky Mitten pattern. Right. Is, yeah. Our our Lucky Mitten pattern. Mm-hmm. By, yeah, Fiona. by Fiona Ellis. Okay. I'm just leaving out the hockey sticks, but <laughs> same mitten pattern. Yeah. This is 85 merino, superwash merino, 15% nylon. Oh, cool. And what colorway is this one? This is called Titanic. Right. We love the blues and the browns in it, so I brought it to you. I mean, we have probably like 25 colors. Um, and so if you want to see... 32, I think. 32. If you want to see this one um, in its striping combinations, mm-hmm. you can take a look at, at the website and uh, they, they have them all there. But I just love the blues and the browns in this one. And then Feel I, it. I brought two it Christmas-inspired ones. So mm-hmm. show us the other ones. Yeah, so this one's Grinch. Of course it is, right? Yeah. And I think it's got like three colors in it. That oh. one, I think, has four. There's a navy and a blue and a dark gr- brown and a lighter brown. Right. Sort and of then, like the ocean and the ship, mm-hmm, right? Absolutely. And then this is definitely Grinchy. And yeah. this one? This one's peppermint. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, doesn't it just even just not knit up? Right. It, you can tell it's going to be a very cool stripe. Yeah. So, so yeah, everybody needs to try this yarn if they haven't. It's really nice. I think this should be a hat. I mean, oh. when you put it into wider things, like hats, the stripes are going to be narrower. Mm-hmm. But I think that would look really cool. Um, or you could do a scarf, you know, just a scarf on a 16-inch needle. So, again, your stripes would be narrower, mm-hmm. but you could just do a tubular scarf like Alexandra's airplane scarf. 
Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, sure, that this is nice. so, so soft. Yeah. So if you, um, if you want it and you want to get it through us, just phone. We mm-hmm. can do an over the phone order and we can yeah. tell you what we've got in stock. And um, you can look online and find out what mm-hmm. colors they have. Like, honestly, 50 or 60 different shades. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they're, and they're working on something really special for us too. Oh, are they in the now? Year. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's to come then. It is to come. Okay. Yeah. Then we got another very special thing. We do from Manos. Okay. Right. Okay. So here's what we have, Cynthia. I actually saw these patterns on Manos's website. The the garment though the patterns. The patterns. Okay. I'm gonna and take the sleeve. Yeah. It's um. There's a scarf, a shawl, and a cowl. And these are done with a yarn called Fino. Now, we've had Fino in the store before, and mm-hmm. it's a beautiful uh, it's merino a silk. Merino silk. Yeah. 30% silk, 70% merino. And there's 450 meters on a 100-gram skein. No, this is not a skein. No. This is a bundle. This is a bundle. So <laughs> this, this is how our yarn it. comes. Yeah. Right? And there's yeah. five skeins in this bundle. And so our job... Our job, it's a terrible job, is to unpack the bundle, undo all the ties, and then turn all these um, skeins, in, uh, these loose skeins into twisted ones, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they hang, hang up the on the shelf. Yep. So my stepdaughter puts these over her head. <laughs> she looks more like a wig. She wears <laughs> like yarn. It's pretty it's funny. It's pretty funny, yeah. 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 So yeah, so what, what they've done is they've taken one full skein, and then they've got mini packs. So here's a Fino Mini. Mm. So this contains five. Let me open this up. Yeah. Five, five colors. mini skeins. Right. And then you can do this scarf. So just one, one full skein of Fino plus the mini pack. Right. Does the whole scarf? Does the whole scarf. Wow. That's so you impressive. can see how the scarf is, you know, the majority of the scarf is the cream. But then on the end, they've taken and they've done the stripes. Oh, this is really, this is, and so these skeins are um, kind of like semi-solids. Mm-hmm. They're, they're various tones and shades of color. Like this pink has some coral in it as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. That's lovely. Aren't they pretty? That's really nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's one. Okay. This one's called, oops, Charlie, Charlie Scarf. Mm-hmm. They're all designed by the same woman, Lisa R. Myers. Okay, okay. let me hold uh, this one up. Sure. You got a color pack for that one too. Yep. This is the incremental shawl, and it's got stripes. So we've got yeah. this colorway here. This one looks like it might have short rows in it. I think it does. This one's a really deep charcoaly color. Oh, it's just got so many different colors in it. It's called Morning. I think, you know, it seems to me like this is how they dye it. And yeah. so you can see that not all the skeins are identical. Yeah, see this? Yeah. You get some beautiful silvery shades in there, but then some of the skeins are darker. Mm-hmm. Right? So you may not, each skein is individual on its own. Right. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. when we wind these up, Cynthia, sometimes these are so, oh, these are unspun. And so sometimes you'll feel them kind of stick together, oh. almost like they're a little bit felted yes. when you're winding them. Yes. And that's just because the yarn's so soft. Yes. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah that's, that's very true. Like there's there's a lot of stick in there. So when you're winding it, you need to you need to wind it carefully. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. And I'm not sure if this is the colorway that goes with that one, but it goes with something. It sure looks like it. That's beautiful. Just a nice really neutral. Beautiful. And then... There's this one. So we have lots of mini packs. Yep. The last project is this one, the Ring of Rings Cowl. Oh. So this is kind of like Alexandra's airplane scarf. Right. You knit it in a big tube. Right. I'm thinking I might take this one with me on vacation because this would be such a nice one. Yep. Just to knit on the plane. And it's it's alternating. So it's the same colors alternated, but on half the cowl, the stripes are alternating in narrow stripes and on half the cowl. They're alternating in wide stripes. Right. That's really cool. And what was the one that, the, this yeah. one is the gold yeah, and this one like I it. think, right? Yeah, I mean, you don't have Before, to do it in this no, colorway, right? You can you do it whatever to. you want. But. Oh my goodness. Look at this. <laughs> that's, that's just so. 
that's just so rich Isn't this and gold. gorgeous? Yeah. Like, and look at it. It's got kind of chartreuse yes. and a deep orangey gold. Yeah. Oh, I love this. Yeah. So wh what's the plan? Are you going to make kits with these? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're going to kit them up. That's a great idea. And I think we probably got 10 colorways. Okay. I, I couldn't decide. So I had to buy, you know, Looks more like than... That there's seven. Do you mean... Do you mean 10 colorways of the main color? Yeah, ah, I got more of the main right. just because I thought it'd be fun to put some, our own combos together. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, you may not be, you know, like an autumn kind of person. You may right. really, you may like those, you know, jewel tones like I do or mm -hmm. really cool grays and monochromatics with a shot of purple or lime green or something like that. Yeah. I, like I thought this kit, for example, would look great with this. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. I love grays and golds together. Yes. That's very popular. So yeah. I think there'll be lots of fun combos uh, <laughs> to put together. Right. Right? Yeah. She brings in all this yarn. She says, make up all these kits, and then she goes on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry. I'll be taking lots of knitting with me. Right? So that we'll have samples. Right. When we get back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's perfect. All right, I well, we so thank you, too, for looking after things so that <laughs> I can go on vacation. So nice to have a partner right? oh thank you thank you it's it's actually nice when you go on vacation because we don't order anything so it's less work <laughs> i can't even yeah, laugh i know okay i can see i'm gonna have to take over now all right we have one more thing we to talk about thing. Yeah. flash mob exactly okay so what did you buy us for okay. flash mob this month this month's flash mob is is very special. We um, it's not a unique product that you can get that you can't get other places, but it is a very special product in that there's not very many of them made. So when we were at Knit City, we bumped into Felicia Lowe from Sweet Georgia, mm -hmm. and Felicia told us all about her color class. So she's got these little kits called prismatic kits. Here's one right here. Cynthia, have. Show everybody that. <laughs> and this. So Felicia uses these kits in her color class. So you have to go check this out. She's got it online. You can take a whole workshop on how to use color and how to blend color. And I think she's even got a dyeing workshop. So if you're into it, you could probably um, get some undyed yarn and um, play with dyeing but these little kits we thought were ideal yeah it's really cute there's 12 mini skeins in here right and they're the color of the rainbow yeah so they kind of go from one end of the rainbow to the other so just so just it's i know i know that the the box probably reflects the light so you can't see it very well but on the side here there she's saying you get cherry cayenne pumpkin dutch saffron pistachio basil Beach House, Sapphire, Empress, Grape Jelly, and Raspberry. They're all Tough Love Sock, mm -hmm. which is 80% Superwash Merino and 20% Nylon. And each skein is uh, approximately 14 grams, yeah. 50 to 52 yards, or 45 to 48 meters, right. and uh, so half an ounce. There's actually mm -hmm. quite a bit of yarn in here. Felicia was saying there's over 500 meters in one of these boxes. So you can do a lot with 500 meters you can easily do a triangle shawl or a nice big deep cowl right. or socks or really whatever you wanted i i huh. think i might have to have one of these on my shelf just to look at <laughs> i think i'd like to put mine in a bowl and just have it on the coffee table well here's what i'm thinking hmm. you know rachel and hayden should have matching striped raglan cardigans <laughs> see you could <laughs> two do prismatic kits you can just put the stripes in wherever you want right wouldn't just that blend be fun it, blend it with um in fact this colorway would go with both the green and the purple so uh, now you're going to do adam and eve <laughs> instead of eden well the debate goes on doesn't yeah, it yeah yeah I guess it depends on how many of these kits you got. Well, we don't have a lot of them. Right. Yeah. But and we, our, our rule is always customers get first dibs. <laughs> uh, thank goodness we thank goodness we have lots of Adam and Eve and Eden. Yeah. 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 Oh, this, this is really sweet. And uh, Sweet Georgia, I mean, Felicia Lowe is um, a color genius. Oh. Uh, so. That's these, for sure. These are beautiful. And she also says on the bottom here that it's perfect for that little pop of color Knit these mini skeins into a striped shawl or color-blocked cowl 
ombre socks or a fair isle hat wouldn't that be wouldn't that be spectacular wouldn't that be pretty the possibilities are endless mm -hmm. so have fun if you guys are lucky enough to get one of these on flash mob right enjoy have fun and be creative so that'll be november 20th 6 p.m right uh goes on goes online first because the store is closed and yep. uh so if you want to get them, um, the best place to purchase them is is on our online store. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that was that's a wrap on episode ten. Yes. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Hope you didn't mind our scratchy voices. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks everybody for watching and for coming a back. Yeah. You know, a second and a third time. Yeah. Maybe even a tenth time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Take care. Uh, we'll see you again next month. Bye. Bye.